There are X-Men, the Justice League, the Avengers, the Titans. And then there's everybody else. Back in 2009, Mr. Fantastic of the Fantastic Four takes a little trip to the inhuman city of Adelan, searching for the Infinity Gems. The massive teleporting inhuman bulldog Lockjaw happens to stumble on the Mind Gem and is granted telepathy. Using this telepathy to read Mr. Fantastic's mind, he decides to use his other power to go and round up the other gems. Along the way, Lockjaw runs into Hairball the Cat, belonging to Speedball, the Dragon Lockheed, the companion of Kitty Pride, Red Wing, Falcon's pet. Falcon, Throg, a frog with the powers of Thor, Zabu, the saber-toothed tiger ally of the Savage Lands Khazar, and Miss Lion, May Parker's dog. Despite the fact that this team are literally just super pets, they decide to team up as the Pet Avengers and they go off to assemble the Infinity Gems as part of a four-part limited series. A more recent Earth-616 version of the team from 2021 consisted of Lockjaw, Throg, and Lockheed still, but this time accompanied by Doctor Strange's ghost dog Bats and Hugin and Munin the Ravens of Thor, formerly belonging to Odin. This X-Men team and roster, the Extreme X-Men, marked the return of Chris Claremont to the X-Men in a full-time capacity. Extreme X-Men Volume 1 is a series that started in 2001 and ran until 2004. It was a team that featured my girl Rogue as leader, who is soon going to be the leader of the X-Men again, or a X-Men team, which you know I'm all about because I love Rogue. The original Extreme X-Men roster features Beast, Psylocke, Bishop, Storm, Sage, and Thunderbird. Lifeguard, Gambit, and Slipstream were also added into the mix throughout the series. This team was originally brought together to find Destiny's premonition-filled diaries, but of course along the way was distracted by many other imminent threats as happens when you're an X-Men team. There have been several incarnations of the Outsiders in DC Comics, and most have been Batman or Batman family related, with one team even being led by Nightwing. The first ever version of the team came in 1983, after Batman gained a rather uncomfortable standing with the Justice League. The team had some notable moments, particularly because of its new characters like Katana and Geoforce. Batman and the Justice League would patch things up, and so he left the team to continue operating without him. During that time, they were operating in Markovia, in order to receive funding and then move to Los Angeles before they reunited with Batman and gained access to a Los Angeles Batcave. The last version of the team came following Batman Rip in 2008 where Alfred put together the team with each member representing a part of Batman's legacy, but obviously Batman actually never really bites the dust permanently so that didn't really last. Cape Sync is a superhero team, or really a superhero agency I guess I should say, from the same world as Invincible. In fact, as early on as issue number 8 of the Invincible series, you can see some of their members featured in the background. Not only that, but they also ended up getting their own spin-off comic as well. Although I believe it only lasted 3 issues total. It was a miniseries. You know, that's how it goes sometimes. Though there were Cape Sync backup stories I believe in certain issues of Invincible as well, so if you really like it you can also check those out, which also told the team's story. The miniseries centered initially Initially around Bolt, who welcomes a new recruit to the team as his partner, the team is more like a business and kind of seems to operate kind of like a superpowered police station or a police office. People even get paid and everything. Kid Thor is the new kid in town who joins up with Bolt. Bolt, we learn initially, wanted his name to be Black Samson, but obviously that name was already taken by um, the Guardians of the Globe members, so alas, it was unavailable when he joined up with Cape Sync, and that's why he's Bolt. The team known as Force Works was formed by Iron Man, who had left the Avengers due to a dispute as to the role of superhumans. Force Works maintained the outlook that rather than being a reactionary force, they should try to preempt both natural and man-made disasters. The team was initially composed of Iron Man, US Agent, Spider Woman, Julian Carpenter, Scarlet Witch, and Wonder Man, which in my opinion is such an interesting group of heroes. But by the end of their first mission, Wonder Man was thought to be deceased at the hands of the invading Kree, and shortly after the alien sentry took his place, only to be completely forgotten when the team disbanded. The team fought in several skirmishes, but really only lasted about two years. The characters were mainly reabsorbed into the ranks of the Avengers afterwards. I like to refer to this next one as the other XSE team. This team also spiraled out of a team that we talked about previously on this list, Extreme X-Men. XSE here stands for the Extreme Saint Sanctions Executive. Similar to the original XSC that Bishop was a part of in the future, or in his future, this team is also like a military police force, meant to maintain and in some cases 
enforce peace is kept between mutants and humans. Storm was asked to create the team by the United Nations and eventually would increase its numbers by recruiting the rest of her X-Men, making this another government sanctioned mutant team like X-Factor was originally. Team members have included Bishop, Cannonball, Magma, Rachel Summers, Psylocke, Rogue, Sage, Wolverine, X-23, and Gambit. Now that that's a team. Look, even though the book was cancelled in 1978, after a mere 17 issues and many people including the heroes on the team look at it as an embarrassment, the champions roster is actually pretty darn capable. With a team of two founding X-Men, Iceman and Angel, combined with heavy hitters Hercules, the Spirit of Vengeance Ghost Rider, and being led by Natasha Romanov, Black Widow, the champions were aptly named and could kick some serious butt when given the opportunity. The team fought familiar villains like Titanic. Titanium Man and the Griffin, but even began to develop their own rogues gallery with new villains such as Rampage and Swarm. And they even got an addition to the team in the form of Black Goliath before the book was cancelled. The team was intended to reform in 2007, only they were forced to rename as The Order since Marvel had lost the trademark for the champions over the years. You've heard of Green Lanterns, maybe you've even heard of Yellow Lanterns or Red Lanterns or even Black Lanterns, but how about Blue Lanterns? Yeah, that's a color too. Blue Lanterns have only made a few appearances in the new continuity, and even before that, during the New Earth days of DC, they weren't necessarily the most frequent to appear. Mainly, I feel like people just know Green Lanterns, whose color of course represents willpower. To be a Green Lantern, you must be strong in will. So what's blue about? What's the whole blue thing? To be a Blue Lantern, you must be full of hope. <laughs> So beautiful. I feel like I could be a Blue Lantern, honestly. If Green Lanterns are like the intergalactic police, Blue Lanterns are like therapists or peacekeepers or priests maybe. They have long been allies to the Green Lanterns and their powers actually provide a boost to fellow Green Lanterns when they're nearby. Pretty cute. This is because their whole focus is of course on belief and hope, having faith in those around them. As such, many of their names start with a title like Saint, Sister, or Brother. I'd definitely be Sister. Sister Amanda, Blue Lantern. Sister McKnight. Kind of like the champions, DC's Detroit League is another team that gets a real bad rap, but actually has a pretty stacked roster when you take a closer inspection. After Aquaman, a charter member of the original Justice League decided that the Justice League members were too interested in their own individual problems to be part of an effective team, he used his position to disband the team and establish the Detroit League. This new team with half old timers and half newbies was largely used to add some diversity to the DC heroic lineup. Whether it achieved that or not is up to the reader. Made up of league mainstays like Martian Manhunter, Aquaman, Zaytana, and Elongated Man, along with newbies like Vibe, Gypsy, Vixen, and Commander Steel, it's often considered the worst roster of the team, but if you actually look at the roster and do some critical thinking, you'll find that it's very powerful indeed. Martian Manhunter and Zaytana alone are absolute powerhouses. Despite the jokes, Aquaman or even Commander Steel both make really effective tanks, and the rest of the team is quite capable in a very of different situations. The God Squad is about as powerful as they sound, but they still remain one of the lesser known teams in the Marvel Universe. The team was originally assembled by the Council of Godheads, and first came together during the events of Secret Invasion. The team first formed in The Incredible Hercules issue number 117 in 2008. The original roster included Adam the Demogorge, Snowbird the Eternal Ajax, and Amatsu Mikiboshi, later known as of course the Chaos King. The roster would go on to include such impressive members as Silver Surfer, Galactus, Circe, Thor, Amadeus Cho, and of course, Hercules himself. But that's all we got. Thank you guys so much for watching today on Top 10 Nerd. I am Amanda McKnight. And I'm Adam Andrews. Y'all be sure to stay safe out there and we will catch you on the flippity flop. Stay nerdy. See you next time. Peace out.